Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to our webinar, Understanding the Key Role of Independent Directors. Today we will have Victor A. Duva speaking. He has been with CT Corporation for over 36 years and has resided as the president of CT's corporate staffing division since 2003. For over three decades, Victor has guided this division located in Wilmington, Delaware, to deliver convenient and reliable service. He is focused on maintaining consistently exceptional quality for our customers. Vic Duva is a graduate of St. Thomas of Villanova University in Miami, Florida. During the webinar, if you should have a question for Vic, please uh, enter it in the Q&A box uh, that you'll see on your screen. There's a little area there where you can click it and then put in the question, and we'll try to get to those questions as we go through the webinar. Okay, and I'd like to welcome Vic Duva. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Victor. Uh, welcome. Good day, all. Um, first of all, this is a little bit different for me. Uh, I'm usually uh, in front of a room with a whole lot of people, and uh, so this uh, webinar is a little bit different than uh, you know uh, for me, anyway. Uh, you wouldn't think so. I attend board meetings regularly with this, but let's see how this goes. All right. A um, little bit about the. Uh, Independent directors, what is it? Um, I get that question a lot. And it is basically an appointed member of board of directors to protect against voluntary bankruptcy per petition. Um, you know, why is it in place? Uh, and this is what we're going to find out as we go along. Um, the appointment, as it states below, is usually a requirement of a lender f during a financial transaction. And we'll go a little bit deeper uh, into that as we go along. Um, and we'll start now. Why is an independent director appointed? Um, as I was mentioning, uh, the requirement of an independent director is usually driven by uh, rating agencies' uh, legal criteria of how the financial transaction uh, is you know is rated basically, um, and the purpose of this. Uh, wait, a minute, hold on for a second. <coughs> Sorry. Um, purpose of this uh, webinar is I, I will use uh, the term independent director. By the way, instead of uh, independent director, independent manager, springing member. Uh, Special member, so just for the purpose of the ID so we don't get confused, I'm just going to use uh, independent director or ID instead of all the other terminology. Um, another reason why an independent director is uh, appointed, it's a requirement placed on the borrower by the lender in a large financial transaction. And a large financial transaction, usually it's a real estate transaction, and it's usually greater than $15 million. Um, this is another safeguard uh, to ensure an SPE borrower is bankruptcy remote. And um, before we go any further, let me dive down into what's an SPE. Um, a Special purpose entity, or an SPE, is, is one that's formed for a very narrow or specific purpose. All right, it's basically uh, often formed to hold one property. All right, now, uh, a bank, bankruptcy remote entity, or a BRE, is it, basically, it is a, a special purpose entity that has additional characteristics to reduce the likelihood of uh, that the entity will either file a voluntary petition in bankruptcy or become insolvent or have any significant creditors other than the main lender. Um, so, and then the last of which, why uh, independent director is appointed is that one or more natural persons are appointed to serve as a director of the special purpose entity. The consent, which is required by the SPC, SPE's governing documents to file 
uh, voluntary file for bankruptcy or to amend the provisions of the SPE articles. All right. Why is this important and why do we have to, or, or why are independent directors appointed? Um, we can go back all the way to uh, 2001. All right, back in 2001, I'm sure many of you have heard uh, about Enron. Well, back in 2001, Enron uh, had borrowed billions of billions of dollars from multiple uh, lenders, and one day in 2001, all the board of directors of Enron was able to walk into the boardroom and vote for bankruptcy. There was nobody there to stop them. So what happened then? All right, after 2001 and after that uh, horrendous losses taken by many of the lenders, uh, there was the Sarbanes-Oxley Act that came around in 2002. And uh, that was basically put together to protect investors and uh, from from basically from fraud, uh, which is what happened in the case of Enron. If in fact uh, the financial transactions of Enron uh, had IDs in place at that period of time, we would have been able to, I don't know if we would have been able to stop it, but it, there would have been an earlier warning sign. And uh, with that, so that's basically why um, independent directors are appointed today, all right, is, is you know, to avoid situations such as uh, Enron. Uh, now, who can be appointed as an independent director? And you say, well, almost anybody can, uh, but in most cases, and as listed uh, in uh, by the lenders and so forth, uh, and the rating agencies, um, the person that can be appointed basically cannot be a, a director indirect legal or a beneficial owner in the in you know in the entity cannot be a creditor, a supplier, employee, officer, director, etc. Um, so therefore, as you go down that line, you're going, wow, where am I going to get an independent director? And we'll explain to that later. Um, in addition, many lenders uh, in today's uh, LLC agreements that I see, one of the covenants that are in the SPE language that's included in the uh, limited liability company agreement is that the independent directors must come from a nationally recognized service provider. Uh, just to let you know at this point in time that CT has been approved by all lenders and, and rating agencies. Uh, every time we've been appointed, uh, there, there's no issue in, in, in that matter of, of appointing any of our uh, employees. All right, now what's the duties and responsibilities of an independent director? Now, uh, you know, the borrower has been uh, asked by the lender to, to appoint uh, an individual as an independent director. Why? What's What's important? Well, it's kind of a fail-safe, uh, you know, or a safeguard, so to speak, for the lender. Uh, our most important duty is to ensure bankruptcy filing does not take place if the company is solvent. And on the other side is that we would, and we'll go through this in a little in a little bit on bankruptcy procedure, is to vote for bankruptcy when the company is insolvent. Um, as you can see here, some of our other duties uh, are, are material actions. All right, lenders typically require their borrowers to use independent directors as another safeguard 
to ensure that an SPE borrower is bankruptcy remote. All right. Appointing an in independent director limits a borrower's ability to take certain actions associated with uh, bankruptcy, insolvency, and, and, and dissolution. All right. The, the independent director help in, helps insulate uh, against the risk of the or that the shareholders or, or members or partners or, or what have you of the borrower's parent will be able to control the borrower and vote to file a bankruptcy petition. Basically, what uh, I, I was just saying is that uh, it helps keep uh, basically keeps the SPE separate from the parent and affiliated companies. It keeps it outside the corporate veil. All right, that's uh, a little explanation on independent directors. Well, another term that you might hear uh, during one of these financial closings is um, a springing member or a springing manager. You know, what is it? Uh, most of the time uh, in, in these financial transactions is uh, if an LLC is being operated uh, by a sole member, all right, uh, the reason the lender asks uh, the borrower to appoint a springing member and manager is that in case that the uh, member uh, resigns from the LLC is that the, uh, you know, so the LLC is just not left hanging there. As we'll see on the next, uh, well, I'll explain a little bit about my little friend here. Um, that's a springing member. Basically what he's doing, he's just sitting on the sidelines doing nothing uh, in, until, you know, his time comes. Uh, it, that he gets to, you know, spring into action, so to speak. And, um, you know, so he has no fiduciary duties to the LLC uh, and, and so forth. Uh, he doesn't receive any distributions, any capital contributions, anything. Uh, he's just he's just named there, and just in case uh, the, you know, there's no no longer any members on the LLC, that's when he springs into action, as we'll talk here. Um, the, um, as I said here, the sole purpose of the springing member is, you know, spring into action when the sole member's role has been vacated. As previously mentioned, uh, lenders will require the appointment uh, of a special member when the LLC has only one such member. Uh, we don't, we don't normally, we've seen it from time to time if there's more than one member, but it really has to, it's, this is really comes into play when there's only one member uh, on the LLC. Uh, and then if we do spring in an action, uh, our, our responsibilities are rather limited anyway. As I mentioned before, you know, we don't receive any distributions or make any capital comp contributions or so forth. Um, you know, our main responsibility is to keep the entity going. Um, all right, uh, we've got to keep it active and in good standing. Most of these are Delaware LLCs anyway. And um, one of the things is, uh, and what's so important about having this spring member in place is in Delaware, a dissolution can be prompted if there's no members. So, therefore, that would not be beneficial for the lenders. Therefore, the use of uh, springing members at that, you know, uh, when the financial trans transaction is occurring. Um, all right. Getting back to, I mentioned a little bit earlier about bankruptcy procedures. Obviously, the the main re, uh, responsibility of an independent director is uh, bankruptcy. All right. Um, when appointed, 
you know, we all hope that it all goes well and we're released of our appointment upon, re, you know, repayment alone. And therefore, we really don't have to spring in. A, you know, we really don't have to take any action. However, it doesn't always, you know, go that way. Um, when a bankruptcy filing is being contemplated by, uh, you know, by the borrower, um, and they contact us. Most of the time, we're contacted by the borrower's attorneys, uh, explaining the circumstances and uh, what we're what we're asked, asking of them is what's up there on the screen, a list of the entities involved. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes it's a group of them. Um, we need an explanation of what's the goal. I mean, sometimes it's restructuring. Sometimes it's uh, you know, foreclosure. It, 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 so we need to have all this information, including any reports and presentations that are put together by um, their financial and legal advisors. Um, with that information, we take that and our actions by our independent directors, uh, we take that information, we review it. Uh, we come in, you know, uh, we contact our, also our internal legal department to uh, discuss the options, and, and including if we need outside uh, counsel. Um, I'll just give you, a, for instance, it's, it's uh, you know, it's one of the most recent, most noteworthy uh, uh, bankruptcy cases uh, that have been in the papers over the last year was Toys R Us. Uh, we were named on several um, on, on several SPEs for Toys R Us, and you can imagine that the the, the large number of uh, entities that were involved. So uh, we used our inside counsel, uh, and we also enlisted the uh, help of our outside counsel. And uh, for CT, we're in a very good situation since our outside counsel is. Uh, Goldberg Cohn, and um, you know we also have the use of uh, uh, our main attorney is Ron Barlant, who who also used to be a bankruptcy judge. So we have a lot of experience on our side and a lot of assistance, uh, which which helps our services immensely. And, um, and some of these, uh, you know, where do I find an ID, and you know. What am I looking for? All right. Over the years, I've spoke to many borrowers and lenders and have compiled the following list of characteristics as supplied by them. Uh, this is what they're looking for, all right? Somebody that's trustworthy, responsive, experience, location, et cetera, uh, integrity, longevity, uh, knowledge, and, 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 you know, individuals that are accountable. All right. Um, so well, I looked at that and I said, oh, okay, well, CT has been providing uh, independent directors to the legal community since the concept came, uh, you know, it was initially adopted. Actually, uh, around 1997, the law firm of Richard Layton and Fingers in, in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, came to us with this concept and said, what do you think? Well, uh, our attorneys, they're uh, obviously in their, their firm uh, attorneys, we got together and said, okay, we're in. And we've been doing it ever since. Um, our qualified and professional in, uh, individuals, um, we have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. Uh, we have uh, individuals that are attorneys. We have uh, senior managers uh, as independent directors. We have real estate experts that are uh, uh, that have been appointed as independent directors as well. Um, with the banking with the banking of CT, um, our customers know where to find us, and that that location that I mentioned above that's important. And I'll give you a reason. Just this week, two instances. All right, we we had. Uh, two different customers contact us and say, "Hey, we listen. We have to get in touch with Joe Smith." And they thought Joe Smith worked for us. All right, they're our customers. Unfortunately, they had done a deal and they had used outside counsel, and outside counsel 
unknown, unbeknownst to them, uh, used somebody else as an independent director, and not knowing their relationship with our customer, and uh, didn't use us. They didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know this person, they didn't know this person, they couldn't find them. Now, that's an important part that you appoint an individual that you know where you can find them uh, after they've been appointed. Uh, in both of these cases, thankfully, that they were able to change the independent directors to us and we, we were able to assist them. Uh, all right, so let's, now, the marketing portion of our show, uh, just to let you know that, uh, as I mentioned in a lot of the LLC agreements these days, that the uh, lenders and the rating agencies are uh, asking for a nationally recognized service pr provider, and CT fits, uh, you know, and has been approved by, by all the lenders and the rating agencies. Uh, we have produced predictable pricing, and I'll let you know it's, it's, it's pretty simple. We charge uh, per entity, all right? So if your client has a borrowing LLC and the requirements are for two directors and a springing member, uh, it's, we don't charge any extra, all right? It's per entity. Uh, if you need one director or two directors, it's still the same. Where we, we do not add any additional uh, charges to that, and our charges are just that is just our annual fee. Um, CT has uh, and carries its own DNO insurance, um, as I explained. Our bankruptcy uh, procedures. Uh, we have a our team down in Wilmington. We're located in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, we have an average of over 20 years of experience. Uh, uh, my team is, is well seasoned and, well, and very knowledgeable in, in, in this area. Um, you know, and you combine that with uh, the backing of CT uh, along with the other services that we have, um, you know, especially when you're handling these uh, closings. Uh, we know you have a closing checklist. Uh, CT can handle so many items on that. We can handle the uh, agent for process uh, required for any contract agency that's out there, any type of agreements, uh, you know, your loan agreement, et cetera, that's asking for an ad uh, agent for process. We can handle that. Your independent directors, your formation services, document retrieval, UCCs, you name it, it may probably, you know, we can take off a lot, you know, check off a lot of marks on your closing checklist for you. Um, with that, I am, um, we want to try to keep this within time. So if you have any questions, uh, please type it in. i uh, give you just a couple of minutes to do so while I take a real quick drink of water. Or should I, I was wondering, should I have a coffee here, I guess. They, these are actually pre, pretty neat um, coffee series. I've attended a few, and if you get a chance, please please attend. They're quick and uh, very, you know, give you a little insight on our services and, uh, uh, you know, and, and how we operate. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, giving this to you for, um, for a quick half hour. Um, I'm Italian. Uh, so this was very tough for me. I usually do it in front of a room where I can use my hands and my arms and wave at you, but uh, I've been trying to sit on my hands while I'm sitting here at the desk, so uh, a little bit different. Um, all right, um, I'll give it, a, give it a minute. If anybody has any questions, uh, please type it in. Okay, terrific. Um, well, uh, folks, Vic, I just have one question here. I, we'd just like to ha get uh, some feedback from our customers regarding this um, 
webinar. I just okay. pushed a poll question out there. Sorry about that, Vic. Didn't mean to interrupt. On a scale from one to five, where five is the highest, please rate the value of today's webinar. Oh, webinar was misspelled. Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> so if you could just kind of fill in the answer there, that would be actually terrific. Um, and if you would like to get actual uh, a quote from Vic on uh, Independent Director, please uh, put that in the Q&A box that you would like some, some more information about that. That would be terrific. But on a scale of one to five, just enter the pop-up box if you have time. Uh, where five is the highest, please enter, rate the value of today's webinar. And again, if you would like more information on this or if you're, to talk with Vic or, and or the CT team, please put that in the Q&A box and we'll be sure to get back to you right away. All right. I'd like to thank everybody for coming to the uh, webinar today and thank you, Vic, for presenting. And we look forward to everybody joining us for future Coffee Break webinars as well as our CLE webinars uh, on uh, legal compliance, which uh, happen on a monthly basis as well. Thank you, everyone, and uh, please uh, have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are. Thank you.